Hey everyone, how are you guys doing today? It is, let's see, 2 p.m. CST time here in Dallas. So welcome, come on in. I'm gonna keep an eye out for Jenny. So Jenny, when you do get on, send me your request and I will be keeping an eye out for you. Hi everyone. Hi. Let me know where you guys are watching from. There's Jenny. Hi, you guys. All right, you guys, this is so important. So let me know where you're watching from. And Jenny, I don't see a request from you yet, so let me know when you're on. Oh, there we go. All right. Give it a minute and Jenny will be on Washington, D.C. We are coming there soon, you guys. Yay. Hey, hi. You? Hi. How are you today? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you're doing this. Thank you for taking the time. I think this is so important. Yes, it is. And I see a whole bunch of people getting on. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, Christy, whenever you're ready, I'm ready, girl. Well, listen, you guys, I know a lot of you guys are still jumping on, letting us know where you're watching from. That's amazing. You can keep writing in. We will read back through the comments later. But we're just going to jump straight into it. Um, Jenny and I, I was on a live with Jemmy. Jenny. Jemmy. Sorry, Jenny. <laughs> That's okay. I, I was on a live with her on Monday morning on a Zoom call, and we're going to share more about that in a minute. Um, but you began sharing something, Jenny, and it, it spoke to a dream that I had the night before. So this is a number of dreams, a series of dreams that the Lord has given me that are warning dreams. Um, and we're going to share with you as well. It's not all fear. This is not fear. This is a warning from the Lord and warning right. from the Lord always come with solution. So there was solution attached to this dream, but there was something you said, Jenny, that I wanted you to share first, if that's okay with you. And it was about a prayer that you prayed to the Lord back yep. in 2020. And that was what really triggered me. I, it kind of confirmed to me, okay, I need to share this now. Yeah, I'm so glad that you are. Thank you so much. I had to wipe my camera off. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, good. The, I'm the beautiful, a, I'm the not beauties stable, of life. But I'm, I'm in my daughter's room in an Airbnb, so I'm trying to find a spot here. But um, okay, so definitely want to give some context because when you all hear Christy's dream, you really want to hear uh, the context, right? Mm -hmm. What is happening? on the earth, what has God already been saying? And I just wanna to say too, Christy, you said to me that you released this dream when you had it back in February. Yeah. And there were some comments like, wait a minute, you're just trying to make us afraid yeah. and you shouldn't put like that out because it makes us afraid. And then um, the Lord said to you, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, okay, they're not ready for it. That's right. You know, some are not ready for mm -hmm. it. And, um, but then you had a dream two nights in a row now mm -hmm. that you've seen the dream. Yes. And when God emphasizes when he has this dream, the same dream twice, mm -hmm. and it was about that dream, it's like, there's no question that this dream needs to be released. And so yeah. I will, yes, I'm gonna share this conversation I had with God. And it was in 2020, 2021, everybody remembers, we were all trying to figure out what was going on. Mm -hmm. We were like, God, please give us some direction. This is so hard to navigate, what is happening? And so, living in portland at the time it was uh it was a really dark time for us and the church and many people moved out of the state which is fine when god calls you to relocate you do it mm -hmm. but personally i felt like i was supposed to stay and fight for my state and our region except for the fact i had no idea how I didn't know if other people felt that same way. I think a lot of people felt alone. I felt pretty alone. Mm -hmm. And I also I, felt like I was sitting on my hands. Like, I don't even know what to do, right? Yeah. So I asked the Lord, God, what, what, what will it be? Because we're, we're putting masks on our face. We're putting masks on our children's faces. I knew that that was gonna cause so many problems with kids learning to cover their face and covering their mouths and, I just thought, okay, this is going in a bad direction. And I just wonder how far down the road this is going to have to get. Mm -hmm. We just stand up and say, you know what? I love y'all. I want to be a polite, nice Christian, but this, 
this is over. It's enough. Yeah. And we are, we are saying no now. Mm -hmm. That was my question. God, what's it going to take for the church to stand up and fight? What will, what will be the thing that triggers the church to stand up uh, for righteousness? Mm -hmm. Not people, because we don't fight flesh and blood, but to stand against the principality right. that right. is intimidating everyone. And um, this is what I heard him say. And it shocked me. I was not prepared for this answer. And to this day, it still keeps me up at night. Mm -hmm. The answer, when they take your kids. And I went, okay, hold, hold on. I, I, I was like, like, wait, when they take your kids. I heard it so clearly in my spirit, Christy. It was, there was no question what he had just said mm -hmm. to me. He didn't say, when they bully your kids, when they teach your kids false doctrine, when they intimidate your kids. They said, when he said, when they take your kids. And I thought, okay, I'm a pretty literal person, but I really don't want that to be very literal. I, I really don't want it to be. And I didn't understand really what that meant, but mm -hmm. I heard it loud and clear. And I thought, well, that'll do it. Somebody comes after my babies, you know, <laughs> I like to be a, a fairly pleasant person. I like to be kind to people. I like to, um, you know, uh, love people, yeah. right? Yeah. Very gracious, gentle way. But just like when my little girl Mercy was running through a parking garage the other day, I yelled at the top of my lungs, stop, like loud. It actually made her start crying because I scared her so bad. Wow. But I didn't go up to the car that was coming around the corner and go, excuse me, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I know right. you're in and you probably don't want to talk to anybody right now, mm -hmm. but you're about to hit my daughter. Like there, there's none of that, right? There, there's none of that. And so um, when you shared this dream yesterday, I mean, I, I, I called you immediately and I was like, Christy, like this, this, this is a really, really big deal. And then you said that you'd have the dream that you shared it and it needed to be released. Mm -hmm. One thing I want to share before you share the dream is um, this morning, I was talking to the Lord just a little bit more about this. Mm -hmm. And that scripture came up that we've all heard, most of us have heard, which is that uh, where there is no vision, the people perish. Now, I've always attached that to like, you know, vision of, you know, pleasant vision, right? Like, like great vision. Mm -hmm. and, and he said, no, sometimes it's the thing that people need to know is coming. If, if there is disobedience mm -hmm. and if there is a resistance to following through with my instructions, here's what it will look like. Mm -hmm. And it was two, three days ago, maybe I, I just said, Lord, would it help us to have a glimpse of the future this is before you shared the dream wow would it help us to have a glimpse of the future to make us just kind of go uh-oh this isn't like a cute little mobilization to washington dc and for everybody listening that has not heard about this mm -hmm. that's where this is all leading this is leading to um some we're we're gearing up to be in Washington, D.C., standing mm -hmm. at the mall, a million women and men and families to stand yep. up against the spirit. And it will be a solemn assembly of prayer, fasting leading up to it, all those wonderful things. But we are standing and saying to that principality, to that thing, don't mess with our kids. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing. And, um, but, but this dream, Christy, and I'm kind of giving a little bit more people to come on here because I know people are coming on here right now. When you hear this dream, do not be afraid. Yes. Do not be afraid. <clears throat> Solution is actually in the dream. Some of you might be tempted to get off this live and only hang on to the part where God says, this is what it looks like if you don't pray and fast and stand. Because yeah. he's going to show you in just a minute. This is what it looks like. If we don't get in army formation, we've got to come out of audience mode, get in our army formation. Yeah. And this is what it looks like if you don't but here's what we're going to do instead. And so there is a God solution. There's a God rescue, but it involves us. Mm -hmm. It involves us getting awake and focused on what he's asking us to do in this hour. So anyway, release the dream and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. Amen. And well, I just want to emphasize something that you said, and that's, I don't want you to take away fear from this dream because whenever God has given me a dream, I'll never release it unless I can recognize that there is a solution to that dream. 
And in February, when I had this dream, I actually shared it probably prematurely. And I kind of, just because I felt the urgency of it and I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, pull it back. Um, I'll, I'll tell you when it's time to release that dream. They're not ready to hear it yet. And that wasn't, you know, because of immaturity or anything. I think it's because everyone was still in a sense getting over all of the trauma from the past couple of years. But I feel I have been kind of like just asking the Holy Spirit um, in the last couple of days. So I'll quickly just give you a little bit of a backstory. So not last night, the night before I had a dream of this dream. And in that dream, I was sharing this dream with you all and I was sharing the dream. And here's the interesting thing, Jenny, is I told you I had completely forgotten about the dream. It was almost like the Holy Spirit took it from my memory for the past number of months and then reminded me in this dream, not last night, but not before. And that's when I shared it with you all yesterday because of what you were saying, it was like the Holy Spirit just prompting me yet again. Yes, it's confirmation when you were sharing about when they take your kids. Um, but then last night I dreamt the same dream again where I was sharing this dream. So it was double confirmation of the Lord that it's time to share this dream. It's time to rally the armies to pray. And, you know, I was listening to, I'll just share this one little thing with you. I was listening to Derek Prince this morning about intercession and he was saying history belongs to the intercessor. Ooh. So I want you to recognize that as we're sharing this dream with you today, history belongs to us, not to the enemy's plans and to his plots, but it is a plot that is being foiled. And I believe just as what we saw happen with Esther in the book of Esther, that Haman's plot was foiled. And then the church arose. God called up people, Esther and Mordecai, to pray and stand over their nation. So that's what this dream is. I want you to know that as I go into sharing it with you. So keep that in mind. So I will share the dream now, unless there is anything you want to, Anything else you wanted to add, Jenny, before I do? The only thing is if, if people can stay on here, if they're able to stay on here through the end, because after you share the dream, I would love for you to share the website yes. where this has actually landed in real mm -hmm. life. That's really what shook me because there's a dream and then there's evidence of the dream actually taking root on the earth. Mm -hmm. So that's the piece that I want to make sure people get as well. And then if you have time, Christy, you have that second dream that I think really goes along with this. But yeah, just take it away. It's great. So in February, I have this dream where I see, and it's just, it was very simple, but very extreme. I see children being dragged out of their homes. Um, and it makes me want to cry saying it. I see mothers and fathers trying to grab hold of their children as children are being dragged out of their homes. Now they were being dragged out of their homes by government officials. And by the way, at that point in the dream, I see the word contagion 2025, another virus. I specifically saw 2025 contagion. And in that same breath, I begin to see children being dragged out of their homes really viciously and violently dragged out of their homes by their feet. Some of them were being dragged by their feet and their little hands were like kind of graveling to grab a hold of something and stop being pulled out. And their parents are screeching, screeching, like this horrific cry of the parents crying. Someone's actually saying they had that same dream, Jenny. Oh, wow. Um, I'm actually noticing that a couple of comments Ooh. saying similar dreams. Wow. The parents are screeching trying to grab their children and take them back. And I said to you this morning, Jenny, when I was resharing the dream with you, that I specifically saw they looked like they were government officials. I knew they were government officials and they looked like the soldiers out of, I don't know if anyone's watched um, the movie Hunger Games. They looked that had that eerie look to them and they had this, um, this statement that they were saying, we're doing this for your safety. This is for your safety and for your protection. And it was like this robotic thing that they were saying, yeah. for your safety, for your protection. They were dragging the children out of the homes. The children were crying, the parents were crying and screeching. It was horrific. Um, but in that moment, so the dream switched, it kind of changed gears at that point. And then I began to see mothers and fathers standing at the front of their homes now, I can tell you that this part of the dream, nothing horrific had happened to these parents. They were standing at the front of their homes and they were actually getting down and kneeling at the boundary lines of their homes. And they were praying and they were crying out to God. And as they were praying and as they were crying out to God, I saw a force field, like an invisible force field surrounding their homes and surrounding their regions and nothing, no demon in hell was able to penetrate 
through that force field. So that's literally the dream. It's literally just as simple as that. I saw Contagion 2025. I saw children being dragged out of their homes by government officials, parents screaming. But then on the other hand, I saw parents praying on their knees and crying out to God and nothing was able to penetrate past that. So I like, I don't know if you wanted to add anything before I share a little bit more about that. Um, well, this goes back to what I heard the Lord say. Mm -hmm. When are the, when's the church going to fight? And he said, when they take your kids. Yeah. I mean, you know, here we are, you know, Lou Ingle said this, I think it was two days ago when we were in Detroit or it was last night. I can't remember, but he said that dreams are like the spies. Yes. Right. The spies to look into the enemy's camp, mm -hmm. to look into, um, you know, the promised land had giants, the promised land had enemies that had to be fought. And so we, we have to understand that these dreams are not to scare us and they're not imminent. They're not like, Hey, this is going to happen. You can't do anything about it. No. In fact, in the dream, you must hear that people hit their knees. Yeah. They prayed, they prayed. And if somebody mm -hmm. doesn't prepare life right now, they're about to, they're mm -hmm. about to prepare life. And you know what? There's no shame in that. There's no shame. And right. maybe you were born prayer before, maybe just couldn't get to it. Maybe life just felt too full to have a prayer life. But you know what? I look at my, my I have five kids and I've been looking at my littlest ones, my six-year-old and my eight-year-old the last couple of days knowing this dream and saying, that's all I need to look at. That's mm -hmm. all I need to look at that's to right. get a fasting prayer life. And I want you to look at your grandkids. I want you to look at your children. I want you to look at your nieces and nephews. And I want you to imagine what happens if we don't fight on our knees if we don't fast and pray mm -hmm. the repercussions of that disobedience is epic yeah. it is epic it is it is hell on earth is what it is and so i just thank god you know a couple of days ago i said god do we need a peek into the future and there's tons of people on here saying that they've had a very similar dream if not the very same dream so yeah keep keep going christy I appreciate you okay so a couple of you are asking i'll quickly just recalibrate what the dream was we saw but you can actually go back and watch the live playback i'll post it to my instagram feed so you can hear this in full i feel like it's important you hear it in full but just to recalibrate in the dream that i had it was a warning dream from the lord and i saw children being dragged out of their homes it was 2025 and i saw the word contagion contagion 2025 and children were being forcibly dragged out of their homes by government officials and but then on the other side of that i saw parents praying fasting and standing out the front of their homes well they weren't fasting in the dream but i'm just saying praying fasting standing but they were praying out the front of their homes at the boundary of their homes and i think of the boundary of blood that's right and they were praying out the front of their homes and it stopped the enemy's plans from getting past them i saw a force field over their homes and over their cities so the enemy was not able to penetrate their family's homes but what I wanted to share with you was when I shared that dream in February and I quickly pulled it back before I um, fully pulled it back, someone wrote to me and said, are you aware that last year in Octo on October 23rd, 2022 in Belgium, the World Health Organization um, kind of created a simulation for a pandemic, a coming pandemic called contagion. And you can actually look this up on their website. It's called catastrophiccontagion.centerforhealthsecurity.org. I'll share it all in my feed and everything like that. So you guys can go look at this for yourself. What's interesting is, Jenny, is that the same World Health Organization and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, who is all involved in this, they did the same thing for COVID in 2018. You can look it up. They actually um, produced a simulation for the COVID-19 pandemic ahead of time. They planned it. And you might hear the pandemic and you'll be like, oh, that's all um, conspiracy. Listen, I'm telling you, this is right in front of us. God's giving us a dream and multiple people on here are saying they've had similar dreams. This is the Lord saying, pay attention and pray and you'll foil the plans of Haman. But in this, what's wild to me is when I looked it up, my jaw drops, Jenny, because I'm going to read to you straight from their website. It's right there for everyone to see what they've done. They've created a simulation for catastrophic contagion. And I saw contagion 2025 in my dream without having known this at all. I'm completely honest, did not know about this at all. Um, let me find where it says. It says they created a simulation for a pandemic with a higher fatality rate than COVID-19 that would disproportionately affect children 
and young people. Right there, they've written it out that they are aiming this pandemic, this future pandemic that they are planning for children and young people, which you can imagine the fear, like we're all talking about standing right, you know, against all of this ridiculousness that they're already putting out, but that completely changes the narrative if it affects children and if there is a death decree over children. So I, I just felt like when I saw that, my jaw dropped and I was like, Holy Spirit, you've got to give us strategy. Um, and it's right there, right, for us to all see. But like I said before, take heart because the Lord is revealing and foiling the plans of the enemy so we know what to do and we can move in agreement together. It's, it's going to take an army of us, I believe, to pray and fast and stand over this. And we're going to see these plans fall because yeah. otherwise God would not have given us this dream. He wouldn't have revealed the strategy to us, Jenny, right. if it wasn't for the fact that he was saying, hey, this is what they're planning, but I'm giving you strategy and solution to foil the plans of the crafty. Mm. Wow, that's so powerful. So yesterday, Christy, when you and I were talking, you said um, the Lord really released in your spirit and through the voice of another person to um, start a stampede. Yes. And um, that might sound too aggressive for some people who've been in the church a while. Just things haven't been too crazy. Um, but the thing about it is when it comes to the family, when it comes to the threat of children, mm -hmm. then, um, we need to start a stampede. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be something that is overly engineered and overly planned. We want to um, empower everybody on here mm -hmm. to make a ruckus, yeah. honestly. We're going to have to make a ruckus, which brings us to your second dream. Mm -hmm. I would love for you to share this one because I think this one has everything to do with this. This dream is a little bit of a fun dream. And every time I share it, I laugh because it's, it was so realistic and I've shared this. So if you guys follow me on Instagram and you were following me during 2020, I shared this during 2020, but in a similar way, God gave me a dream in September of 2019 and um, leading up to the pandemic and everything. So when we came into the pandemic, I kept thinking back about this dream and I call it my cow dream because in the dream, I was literally a cow, literally. Like I felt, it was so vivid, Jenny. Like I felt what it would feel like to be a cow. It was horrible. <laughs> but, um, so anyway, in the dream, I am I wake up in the dream and I look down at my hooves and I recognize immediately I'm a cow. And I'm standing behind this bum of another cow and I'm in a corral, like just locked into this corral. And I look ahead of me I look ahead of me and I can see about 10 cows just ahead of me and I kind of turn behind me and there's like thousands of cows behind me to my left to my right corrals all just like that we're in this massive arena and there would be millions of these corrals as far as the eye can see to my left and to my right and I'm like where where are we going and I begin kind of looking past the 10 cows that are in front of me we're going to share DC in a minute, by the way. Someone's asking about that. Hold on. We're going to share all of that. We're going to share with you the strategy, but this is important. So I look past the cows that are in front of me and I recognize we're in a slaughter line. We're about to be slaughtered. And none of the cows around me are aware of this. They're all kind of just chewing the cud, unaware of what's about to take place, even to the point of death where they're literally, I'm sorry, it's graphic, but that's what was happening. And I start panicking and I start stomping my my hooves <laughs> start stomping my hooves and I'm like panicking I'm like what's happening and I, I cry out for help and this moo comes out of me moo <laughs> but I know it's really funny but at the same time I recognize if I don't do something and get out of here I am stuck and at the same time I'm looking around going why is no one else awake to what is happening so I begin mooing like really kind of ferociously and I realize, okay, I've got to jump onto the back of the cow in front of me and that's the only way I'm going to get out of here is by jumping on the backs of the others. As I do that, Jenny, I literally jump onto the back of this other cow. The other cows begin waking up and kind of stop chewing the cut and look over at me and they begin mooing. They look in front of them and they begin recognizing and getting Hi. antsy. I literally create a stampede, Jenny, out of there. It's like it creates this stampede and it's ruckus and it was crazy. It was like, every, you know, all dust flying everywhere. Created the stampede. And when I woke up, I was like, whoa, what was that about? But fast forward to 2020, we were living in Redding, California at the time. And I begin sharing this dream 
with a friend of ours, not knowing his history, his background. And I begin telling him the whole dream and his jaw drops. And he goes, Christy, do you realize what I did when I grew up? And I said, no, he goes, I grew up on a cattle farm and our cattle farm was um, solely to take them for beef. They were beef cattle. And he said, so every um, year we would have this whole um, process where we would have to herd all of the cows into corrals, just like I saw in the dream. We'd have to herd them into corrals. And he goes, you'd have about a thousand cows. And you'd have to herd them into smaller corrals, smaller corral, smaller corral. And he goes, it's a whole process of getting them into that one straight line. What he said to me at that point shocked me. He goes, our job as we were herding them into the corrals, getting them, rounding them up, that's right, getting them lower and lower into this one line, our job was to look out for the one crazy cow that recognized where they were being led. There was always one crazy cow and he goes, our job was to keep an eye out and notice who was the cow that was beginning to recognize, hang on, something's not right here, we're being led to the slaughter. And once they, if they didn't get that cow ahead of time, that one cow would create an entire stampede. They would have to get out of the way, otherwise they would be killed. And he said, Christy, God gave you that dream to tell you, get loud, create a stampede, don't stay silent. And I feel like the Lord is telling us that same thing today. Get loud in the spirit, in intercession, in prayer, in, with your friends, with your circles. Begin telling them what's taking place. Wake up the herd and create wow. a stampede. Because the Lord is giving us these dreams. Like you said, Jenny, they are like um, the, what do you call it, the Israelites and how the spies went into the land. God's giving us these dreams. And so many of you are on here saying, I've had the same dream and that's unreal. God is confirming again and again, wake up the herd, get the mothers and fathers praying, get loud and create a stampede. Wow. Yeah. Well, I told Christy when we were texting back and forth yesterday about this dream, is and by the way if you're just getting on here right now and you just heard the cow dream the the dream that we really wanted to release is the dream that christy released prior to that dream so the cow dream is the second dream mm -hmm. go back and listen to this whole thing to get context content really, really really help it is very very critical um but i told her this about cow the whole west coast of the u.s is called cow i don't know that I just heard this recently, it's California, Oregon, and Washington. And you, you look at what's happening in these states, yes. because I live on the coast, you look at what's happening. There are now uh, laws in place protecting children from hateful parents mm -hmm. that have hate speech and they're protecting them. I was watching something last night and I just thought, these are the days called e when evil is called good and good is called evil. And they were saying that hateful parents have to be dealt with. And hateful parents are parents who won't let their 13 year old cut her breasts off. These are hateful parents that won't let a girl take hormones so that she can be a different gender. These are hateful parents. And I'm thinking about this um, catastrophic contagion that isn't just from a dream. Mm -hmm. It is now in public publication you got to go look at it and go see you know when christy posts about the the um website there this mm -hmm. is real and we can put our head in the sand as kind as christians and say well i hope somebody really um magnificent long and changes all this or we can say wait a minute i am being called upon in this hour yep. because prayers of a righteous man avail much who is mm -hmm. a righteous man not a perfect man not somebody that's done perfect not somebody who's you know as perfect as jesus but a person who has received yeah. the blood of jesus christ and has come and and made jesus lord of their life and because of that they can stand righteously before god they're in right standing with god because of blood of Jesus. It is what Jesus did for us that makes us righteous, not what we have done. And so if that is you, then your prayers avail much. Mm -hmm. Prayers avail much. Mm -hmm. And um, Christy, let, let's release the call to action because we had um, just a quick conversation about, okay, God, what do you want us to do? What strategy do you want us to release? Obvious, obviously, we all need to get on our face on a daily basis. Yeah. Receive union in your home, get the cups, get the whatever you've got to do and do it from a place of victory. Pray from a place of, of faith. pray from a place of like, God, you hear my prayers. And so when I say 
to protect my family and protect this community and protect the city, and protect this nation. I know that you hear me, God, and thank him. We are not free our prayers. We are going to pray prayers of faith. Now, yeah. army, that we need to create a stampede. Yeah. What does that look like? Because corporately, as we come together and we unite, and Christy and Nate, they have their ministry. We have our ministry. Mm -hmm. But if we mind our own businesses and we don't cross-pollinate and we don't come together, I think the enemy is going to get the upper hand on this one. And so God works through such incredible unity. And yeah. so we're asking you not to join my ministry, not to join Nate and Christy's ministry. We're mm -hmm. saying, can we create a stampede? Can mm -hmm. we join a, 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 you know, fly the dust in the air and say, we will not walk to slaughter. We see what's going on. We're not doing this. Not on my watch, yeah. not my kids, not my nieces and nephews, not my grandkids and not the kids of America. Mm -hmm. So, um, Christy, do you want to release some of the strategy that we've talked about? Yes. I was just sitting here, Jenny, as you were talking and the scripture came to my spirit, Matthew eleven twelve. 12, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence and the violent take it by force. This is what this call to action is. This is us raiding the kingdom of heaven and bringing it down from heaven, bringing down the promises of God over the earth and saying, not on my watch. You will not take our children. You will not take our nation. You will not take our city. The violent take it by force. And I'm not talking about violence in the streets, but I am talking about violence in the heavenly realm. That we release our prayers and intercession. Apply the bloodline. The blood of Jesus is our weapon for the hour. Apply the bloodline over your families and your cities and your regions. I'm getting ahead of myself. But no. No. <laughs> we wanted to give you a call to action. So if you're not already... Jenny and I both have prayer hubs and prayer hives. You can join those. Um, start praying, like gather an army of your friends. You have, you cannot say to me that you don't have an influence, a sphere of influence. You do. And your sphere of influence matters. You need to be praying with your sphere of influence. Grab your friends, grab your church and say, hey, the hour is urgent. We are on a moment right now where I believe we're on the precipice of seeing this begin to play out if we don't do something now and begin to pray now and stand up and pray. So we have our prayer hubs, Jenny. I don't know if you want to talk more into that or yeah. we're a website that they can go to for that. Sure. Yes. You can go to Nate and Christie's site. You can also go to hervoicemovement.com. I've actually heard of people doing hubs and hives united together. I love that. Yeah, so that's 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 really incredible but the point is mm -hmm. when two or more come together and agree on something yeah. god for something not only is he there in the midst of them but he does what is asked of by those two people so christy when you say don't tell me that you don't have influence that's exactly right because every mother mm -hmm. right now you have kids in your home you have a prayer hub. yes it's the kids down at the kitchen table yeah. It's called, I'm getting these prayer points out, whether you do the hives or the hubs, it doesn't matter. Get praying. Training our kids up to pray is so important. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the only thing they have to cling to when adversity comes, when the devil tries to come, the only thing they have to cling to is fear. Mm -hmm. Oh, mom, pray for me, which is great. But right. you know, these little ones, they are not stupid. And the devil has no mercy on them. Mm -hmm. You must teach them the weapons of war, which is prayer and fasting. My little kids even, I'll say something someday like, hey, you know what? I know normally right now we eat lunch. What we're gonna do is we're going to wait an hour and we're just gonna pray worship music on. Mm -hmm. I pair with fasting so that mm -hmm. they get used to like, oh, I might not eat when I'm hungry because I'm gonna go eat the commute i'm gonna eat in communion and intimacy with god i'm gonna feast on the presence and then we eat in an hour i'm not starving my kids mm -hmm. okay but what we're doing is we're training them up in the way they should go so they will not depart from it because it is this isn't just a female fight this is a family fight yes a family fight so get into the prayer hives get into the prayer hubs get into prayer mm -hmm. period on your calendar because if you don't put it on your calendar, it slips away. It just does. It just slips away. Get it on the calendar. Mm -hmm. You can pray once a month probably is the very least amount of consistency. You can pray once a week. You know, in Korea, I mean, they're praying every single morning at 4 a.m. How humbling is that? Like, wow. it's so, so just pray. Just yeah. pray. 
get inside a prayer club or a hive or whatever context that you have available to you. Okay, next thing that we were talking about, um, I called Christy this morning because I said, I don't want to release this unless it's on your spirit too. But I have been feeling strongly in my spirit that there is a remnant of men and women, not just mothers and fathers, but Esther's and Mordecai's that are, are, are really sensing as we build to Washington, Washington, D.C., we're aiming for October 12th of 2024. We have to get the permit. Please, please pray about that. Mm -hmm. But I, I was thinking in my heart, we probably need to fast a year. Yeah. That Esther treatments, right? We, we need to fast a whole year leading up to October 12th. Not because we want to have a really cool worship session on October 12th, 2024, but because we need to, using your words, Christy, unhinge the plans of the enemy. Yeah. That thing has to collapse. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, God, I think you want a people who will set maybe some sugar aside mm -hmm. for a year. Mm -hmm. My mom did a year without sugar and it actually put her whole body back together. Wow. <laughs> the sugar was eaten out of her body and she is one of the healthiest people I know now and she's um, over 70 years old. But she had a whole year without sugar. She fasted that and then she just stayed off after that because her body didn't want it. But what is it? What is it that you could fast for one whole year? Maybe it's sweets. Maybe it's meats. Maybe it's coffee. Maybe you need to do a Daniel fast. Mm -hmm. I bet you're crying out for this anyway. And um, as much as I love food, I love all the celebrations. I love the birthday parties. I love all of that. I'm thinking about your dream, Christy. And I looked at those two little kids of mine and said, you're worth fasting for. Mm -hmm. you're, you're worth giving up whatever it is that God wants me to set aside for a year. I'm, I'm willing to do that. Yeah. No way in hell. I'm going to allow my kids to be taken from me right. over catastrophic contagion, whatever you want to call it. I will not do it, but I know what I'm up against. I'm not up against mm -hmm. the government. Mm -hmm. I'm against a spirit yep. that thinks it can, yep. A spirit principality and so if we only fight in the natural mm -hmm. we're gonna we have to go into the spiritual realm and tell the devil what's up we have to get mm -hmm. on the scene with our spiritual authority and the way to do that is fast mm -hmm. i like to eat anybody else it's not that much fun to give up food to be honest my flesh likes mm -hmm. it and not necessarily sin all the time right but in this hour i believe that some of you and i hope it's most of you We'll say, you know what? I'm doing this. I'm I'm gonna fast. I'm gonna fast because there there is no way that I can stand on the sidelines of this thing. Some of you've asked, how do I get in the game? How do I get in the fight, God? How do I get in the ring? How do I make a difference? This is it. Mm -hmm. Get five. Get a prayer hub. Whatever you want to do there, and fast and pray with us. And then the other thing is this, you know, as as a church, we tend to look at events as like moments in time that we can go and just get a really cool breakthrough with God, which is absolutely true. But there's something different happening. God actually wants to create a stampede, right? He yeah. wants to create a ruckus. And, and, and the way to do that is there's multiple ways to do that. Like some of you, God is asking to have a retreat in your home with six people, do a weekend retreat, put the girls in the different places in your, in your house, have a retreat, go after God together. For us, what we're doing, and Nate and Christy are part of this, we are going to five cities across the nation. Mm -hmm. and we are saying, come, get your personal freedom, bring as many women and family and Gen Z and Alpha. We want the family in the room, actually. And we want to see God set people free. Yeah. But we want to create a, a holy disaster for the enemy. Good. We want to create such a mess for him okay. that he has to go back to hell and say all of our plans are ruined what are we going to do now so will you come and create a mess with us we have five cities we start in two weeks in st louis and then we go to washington dc you know washington dc i've heard these statistics um and this isn't for the big gathering okay this mm -hmm. is the strike this is a strike that we're going to do just in three weeks september 21st at the bible museum we are looking for men and women who want to get in that room and they're saying no we're not doing this in the Northeast. We're not doing this in our region. We are saying no to that principality. You will get your own freedom there, but it is also freedom for a nation. And DC, we need you. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. we, we don't need you to sit on the sidelines and say, well, I hope that goes well for you. And I hope that I can benefit from everything that you do. We need you. We need you to get in the car, drive seven hours, whatever you have to do, get on a flight. We need you in the room and there's 400 seats. So make your way there. This is all at hervoicemovement.com. You can register for that. Nate and Christy are going to be there. It is going to be a historical moment in time, but it is all about the stampede. Can you get right. in the room and create? create a holy disaster for the enemy. This is what we're doing. Create mm -hmm. holy disaster for, for the enemy. Let those words penetrate your spirit. You are to be a crazy cow with us. You are to be that. You have just jumped on your thinking, what? I'm a crazy cow. You've got to go back and listen to this, okay? Cow. Do not be drugged to slaughter. Do mm -hmm. not follow. Do not follow. Do not comply. Do not follow. And you are amongst other people that are saying we're crazy too so we might as well be crazy together and then in the first of the year in january we'll be in houston texas then we'll go to la in february angela's temple yeah. and then we'll be going to naples florida in march and then here's something that's really incredible please put this on your calendar april 13th in your capital your capital city there will be a team of people that will be hosting a prayer gathering and you will stand there on that day with your family, with your friends, with as many people as possible. You will stand there that day and you will say no to that principality. That's right. You will, you will worship. You will repent on behalf of your state. And I believe that God is going to honor that because all 50 states will be standing together on April 13th, which stands for Esther 413, which is when Mordecai says, hey, Esther, I know you're in the palace, but the problem with that is you're not safe there either. No. We are in our little, our homeschool, um, whatever's, we're not safe in our, you know, Christian labels. We're not, we can't say, well, I go to church and my kids go to church. So we're safe from this thing. No, we're going to have to pray fast and stand. And I might sound really strong with you, but I have to, I have to, because of what God has, has convicted me on the inside yeah. for this time. And it is our hour to, to fight. So those are some things coming up. Um, Christy, do you want to tell everybody about with the fasting? We will release that to stay tuned. We believe that we want to start that on October 12th of this year yes. and have a fast. And this fast is going to look different for you than it might for me or whatever. Mm -hmm. Let's mm -hmm. talk on all the hows. Just go to the father and say, is this, is this me? Is this what you want me to do? Yeah. Okay. But as far as on a weekly basis, can you share with everybody what we're doing on Mondays? So every Monday we are doing a, we call it an onboarding where you can come on and hear the vision of what we're sharing with this. We'll be sharing this again and again. Jenny will be sharing all about the Washington Mall, the million women on the mall and the vision behind that. If you want to hear more about that, you can go to, um, what is it, Her Voice Movement or is it One Million Women? Yep. Sorry. I know we're sharing a lot of websites with you all, but I'm going to share all of those. So just so many of you are asking as well all of the backstory. If you haven't, if you're just jumping on now, we are going to post this to my page, to Jenny's page. I'll share it to our YouTube everywhere, Facebook, everything. You can share this around and I'll have all of the websites that you can go to and have a look. So for Mondays, you can go to One Million Women dot live and you can hear all about the vision now this is really us rallying a million esters to the washington dc mall and this isn't as jenny said about a gathering or about one one person or about a bunch of speakers on a stage this is not about that this is about standing for our children standing for the nation and the nations we actually nate and i are going to be start starting to call australia and new zealand to come over based off a dream as well but the Lord is rallying the troops right now to pray fast and stand. You see, because the enemy has overplayed his hand over our children. Right. There is such a demonic warfare over our children right now. I just watched Jenny literally right before this live, a video of a mother bringing a child, like an eight-year-old child in to begin castration surgery. Eight years old and he's on the table crying his eyes out. Oh. There is a demonic warfare against children right now. And the Lord is calling on us, the mama bears, the crazy cows, stand up. Will you stand up and pray as Esther did? Will you recognize the plots of Haman? And will you respond or will you stand back and be silent? And I mean, it's interesting, Jenny, that we're gathering on 413 and how that scripture is speaking of Esther. She's wanting to pull back. She's actually like, oh, intimidated. Like, this is too big for me. And Mordecai responds to her and says, if you don't, 
What, who are you to think that you and your children and your father's house and family will not perish? And that's, I believe, the warning of the Lord right now, that God is giving us strategy, but we must respond. We must stand up and fight. And I believe many of you right now are actually feeling the fire of the Holy Spirit as we're, as we're talking and you're feeling the response. You're feeling that, that pull of the Holy Spirit. Respond to him. Respond to him and say, yes, Holy Spirit, will you show me what I need to fast? Will you show me what I need to pray? Will you show me how to step into and start a prayer hub or a prayer hive and join one of them? Will you show me how to do this? Ask him and he will show you. But the, the key in this is respond. Don't sit by and listen to this warning and think, oh, it might not happen. I'm telling you, this is a warning warning sorry of the holy spirit and the holy spirit is asking us to respond in this moment will you respond will you stand up and fight and respond and i'm i'm serious i feel like what jenny said this morning about the fasting as soon as you said that to me jenny it was like this fire came over me that's it that is the teeth in the fight alongside the blood of the lamb applying the blood of the lamb over our communities over our families and our children and telling the enemy not on our watch you will not pass over the bloodline of our children in jesus name in Jesus I name. I have this as well, Jenny. This is, you guys can get this off. Um, is it the Her Voice Movement or 1millionwomen.live website? Um, hervoicemovement.com. Mm -hmm. So this will give you, you guys can go there and Jenny has like an incredible, um, it's probably all back to front, but incredible little booklet that you can download all of it and it will give information all about everything to do with what we're talking about. Um, and you'll be able to get involved, know how to get involved, start a prayer hub, get your children praying, join us on this roadmap to the Washington DC mall. It's so important you get involved because your voice matters. That's right. That's right. And if you did not get a chance to watch this from the beginning, listen, mm -hmm. I know there people send me stuff all the time and every, every bit of it is important. This one, please go back to the beginning, yeah. watch all the way through, take notes, and ask the Lord, be, be prayerful, ask the Lord as you go, okay, God, give, give me clarity on my marching orders mm -hmm. as, as men are sharing the next step. God, give me the bravery. God, give me the clarity. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe so much. I mean, Christy, I, I, I'm not actually this brave. <laughs> this, this is the Holy Spirit. Me neither. Don't worry. Yeah, I want everybody to understand. I'm a middle child. Mm -hmm. I spent most of my life helping people get along and it's not my nature to actually create a ruckus it, mm -hmm. it's not but because of the dreams because of what god has spoken to me because of the book of esther and i'm reading the word of god and i'm seeing this girl who feels like me like yeah no i can't do that you know why i said that to, to mordecai she said it's illegal i can't it's against the law and that's kind of my nature Wow. Like okay, everybody's in harmony. Let's just, but, but what the Lord has said to me is this is a total wipeout. Mm -hmm. Do you want that Jenny? And what will happen is when you say yes to God and lay your flesh down, lay it down. Yeah. I mean, he even told me, put your positivity away. You don't need to, you don't get to use that just because it works for you. Mm -hmm. and it can blind us to the battle at hand. And he said, I need you to hold on to this. Prayer is the answer. Get people to pray mm -hmm. and draw your sword. And that's what he's told me. And so I don't want anybody on here to think that Christy and I have this personality and this is all working for our personality. It's actually not, mm -hmm. it's not working for our personality, but the spirit of the living God on the inside of us says that these children are not going to make it unless the others stand up and say, do not mess with our kids it is over enough, enough we're not having this you cannot have my kids you can't have her kids you can't have their kids no these are god's kids, and i have been put in this place in this moment in time to protect these children and i say enough, enough. and so i just want to put that on the inside of you do not do not let the enemy say oh those girls are so strong they're so bold you know you can't be like that but maybe you should try you know give it your best shot you know i know what the enemy says and he wants you to compare your personality to ours. And that's why I think I needed to share that. That's good. We're just, we're, we're staring at the enemy's plans and saying my personality or whatever I fear or whatever I don't want to do, that's got to take a back seat. And I'm going forward.
and mm -hmm. you can do it. You can do it too, woman of God. You don't have to be. Um, your your personality is not a conflict. Rise up on the inside. Rise up your spirit on the inside. Mm. And this is the hour that I've been here for. This is what I'm going to do. But you don't go in power or might, but by the spirit yes. of the living God. By the spirit, it is by the spirit that you will be sent forth and launched in power in Jesus' mighty name. Please send this broadcast to as many people as you can. Uh, Reshare this, all the things, and make sure people know about this. And we will we'll yeah. march forward together. We're going to have everything all in the reshare. So you'll see all of that. You'll be able to watch it back. If you haven't seen the full story, the whole thing, I really encourage you, you need to see the whole thing to understand the context of the warning of the Holy Spirit, but also his solution in this, that you are being invited into. You're being invited into the solution. Jenny, I wonder if you could pray over them Absolutely. all about, especially specifically with what you were just saying. I feel like the fear of men, yeah. breaking that off them as they step into this, because the enemy will try and intimidate all of us. Oh. You know, say to us, hey, your voice doesn't matter. Your voice won't do anything. What is little you have to say? But your voice actually disempowers his plans when you pray. That's right. Mm. Okay. I want you in your mind's eye right now. I, God shows me these visuals and the visual I'm seeing is the phrase. And I want you to see it in your mind's eye. Don't your eyes if you're driving or whatnot, but if, mm -hmm. if, if you can, I want you to see the phrase, go along to get along, go along to get along. This has been the uh, pitch. This is the sales pitch of the enemy. And some of the, made an allegiance an alliance a friendship with just go along to get along don't make a mess don't make a ruckus don't put up a fight now i want you to take your hand and your dog finger in your mind's eye and go up to jesus himself let him give you some blood on your finger some of his blood that paid for freedom it paid for freedom all freedom no bondage and that blood that speaks a better word mm -hmm. for right now and i want you to wipe it out from the left to the right cross it out the go along to get along cross it out with the blood of jesus you might even need to smear every single part of it i know this might sound silly this might sound weird but i'm telling you i see the, mm -hmm. the power of god coming through your finger, your agreement right now, and the blood of Jesus dissolves every single letter in that alliance. And it's like, deals off, contract is broken, I disagree, no, no. I will agree and align myself with the truth of the word of God. Now in your mind's eye, what I see is God handing you, go up to Jesus in your mind's eye. He's handing you the word of God. He's handing you a Bible. And now I see him handing it to you. You take the Bible and I actually see you hold it up against your chest. And there's a new agreement. There's a new alignment. There is a commitment and an allegiance to the word of God that it speaks the truth, the truth, the truth. It is the truth. And Jesus was the word walking in flesh and so it is his flesh that you're holding up against your chest and i actually see the bible the words of the pages actually begin to um go into your flesh go into the the fibers of your body you, you, the word of god is actually going into your bloodstream into your mind reworking rewiring the places inside of your mind and it's going into your bloodstream it's actually correcting thoughts that were, that were off track. It's actually correcting where the truth was twisted and perverted and wicked. And, and the word of God is actually cleansing and setting things straight again. Even the traditions that have nullified the word of God, the family traditions, even the traditions of generations past, mm -hmm. the actually getting um, completely dismantled right now. And the word of God is calibrating the way you think this is a supernatural thing that's happening right now this isn't a degree that you have to go get this is 
schooling or a course you have to take. This is you receiving the recalibration of the word of God going into your body. It is the living bread. It is the bread. It is the word of God. It is nourishing you. It is going into every cell, just like the food we eat. It affects every cell of our body. So you are eating the word of God and it's going and it is reconstructing every cell of your body. In fact, some of you are getting a physical healing right now that your body is actually getting healed. There's somebody with a kidney, your left wow. kidney has up and the word of God is actually cleansing your left kidney right now and it is straightening out the cells of your left kidney right now somebody's been getting neck pain bad bad neck pain around the back of your neck that radiates around the sides of your neck and God is actually right now as a sign and a wonder he's easing that pain right now and he's actually taking off the thing that has been clenching the back of your neck right now and somebody God is actually right now because of the word of God going in and penetrating every cell, relieving you of nasal drip. There's been nasal drip and it's just been like a dripping faucet, a stinging dripping faucet on the back of your throat. And God right now is drying up right now, drying up the infection in Jesus name, in Jesus mighty name. All sorts of things are happening right now. Mm -hmm. Father God, we thank you. We thank you that we don't have to stand back and away from the things of god yeah. but we are one we were we are one with the mm -hmm. father we are one with christ you can, can't tell where i am and where jesus is and where i leave off no we are one with him we abide in him so father i thank you right now the spirit of the living god god is rising up on inside of every person under the sound of my voice by live or right by replay mm -hmm. Spirit of God is rising up in courage and bravery, especially right now. I want to speak to the citizens and the residents of the United States of America. You are in the land of the free and mm -hmm. the home of the brave. And I declare and decree that word yeah. over you. You are in the land of the free because you are brave. And the one who was brave enough to go to the cross to die for your sins to be raised again in three days and, and, and take all authority away from the devil. That bravery, that spirit of bravery lives on the inside of you. And you now are going to shift away from blocking the bravery of the Holy Spirit. Wow. You are shifting away and you are allowing the Holy Spirit to be brave in you. I feel like I need to say this, that truth does not need anger to get its point across. Okay does not need bitterness to get its point across. Truth mm -hmm. does not need offense to get its point across. In fact, it doesn't get its point across in those ways. But truth in love, truth in love, not love without truth and not truth without love, but when they are married together by the, the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. those two married together will set the captives free. Truth needs your voice mm -hmm. that's right. right now truth needs your voice and so father god we repent we repent for every alignment and every assignment mm -hmm. that we've of the enemy to play little to play small to get in the cattle line and just go along to get along not understanding that we are being led to slaughter and leading others to slaughter mm -hmm. with our and by back away from a spirit of intimidation and I speak to a spirit of intimidation right now and I tell you to stand down in the name of Jesus Amen. by the Jesus stand down stand down and I command right now angels to come into every place where a spirit of intimidation has been residing I command angels to come and arrest that spirit right now and haul it off to a dry and arid place never to return again to the home that I'm speaking to right now never to return again to the world I'm speaking to right now Never to return again to the community that I'm speaking to right now in Jesus' mind, in Jesus' name. Now, now, women and men of God, you have the authority to agree yes. with God. Use your Thank authority. God. Yeah. Say, God, God, we believe you. God, we are your vessels. We are your trumpets. Mm. We are your mouthpieces of the hour, and we will not back down. We yep. will not be 99% Christian. We are 100% totally in the spirit of God. God. Amen. In Come Jesus, on, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I just saw as you were praying, Jenny, that the cloak of heaviness was falling off many 
that the cloak of heaviness and intimidation, that there was literally the Holy Spirit was pulling it off you. And in that moment, I saw the Holy Spirit release keys and fresh mantles. I feel like many of you are literally picking up in the spirit right now, keys and fresh mantles of courage, not by might, not by power, but by his spirit. And you're gonna receive these mantles that you'll step into in the coming days and hours. You're gonna feel um, courage arising within you. And I'm telling you, don't retreat from that, step into it because the Holy Spirit's releasing courage over you to speak and pray and give you wisdom and understanding and insight Guys, if you were watching before we cut out, I forgot that there is a one hour time limit on Instagram. But nevertheless, listen, I just want to quickly reshare with you guys just to wrap this all up to go watch that live, the full live. It's just one hour. If you haven't watched it yet, go on that whole live um, and listen to the charge that we're releasing to you. We're releasing to you a charge that is both a warning, but also an invitation of solution from the Holy Spirit for this hour that we're living in. And I believe the Holy Spirit is giving us solution. We don't need to fear the hour. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the Father. And if God is for us, who dare stand against us? So we are standing in a critical hour, but at the same time, we have an invitation to respond to the Holy Spirit. So I really encourage you, go and check out that live. Um, I'll leave you with these little thoughts. I was listening to Derek Prince this morning. If you haven't listened to his teaching before about intercession, incredible teaching about intercession. And it was just like stirring me up, stirring up my fight. And just what he was saying about history belongs to the intercessor and um, something that he said that I just loved. He was sharing about King Herod and how the church was praying. The church was gathering together. Yes, we need to make a stampede. The church was gathering together to pray for Paul, who had been taken into custody and he was in prison. The church was praying together. Now, what I loved what Derek Prince said, and I want to leave you with this final thought is, though Herod sat on the throne, the church was in charge in the heavenly realms. The church was in authority over Herod in the heavenly realms. So regardless of who is on the throne, who is leading um, governments, we have the higher authority in the heavenly realms by the blood of the lamb. So it's time we begin to move into that and release the blood of the lamb. And you know, Herod, I'm not saying I wanna pray this or encouraging you to pray this. We need to be praying for our government in this hour, even if you do not like them. I'm not a big fan personally, but we need to be praying for them and praying that the Holy Spirit would convict them. And if not convict them, remove them and replace them with righteous government. We need to be praying for our government in this hour, praying over these coming plans that the enemy is releasing. But listen, listen to this. The Holy Spirit is revealing and foiling the plots and plans of Haman. And Haman, interestingly, in Hebrew means confusion. He releases confusion. And that's what the Holy Spirit is bringing back, um, kind of pulling back the covers and pulling back the veil and allowing us to see the plots of Haman so that we can pray and um, pray, stand and fast and move in response to the Holy Spirit's solution. And that is to pray, stand and fast. So if you haven't yet, go watch the entire live that I just did with Jenny. Is she on, by the way? I don't know if she came back on. We both lost track of time there and forgot that Instagram cuts you off after one hour. <laughs> but anyway, so go watch that, you guys. It's imperative that you watch that and get a hold of the vision of what God has given us to be released right now. Um, we're not going live later, but we do go, um, Jenny goes live every Monday. So you can follow her voice movement. You can see them here in the, in the chat, her voice movement. And there is just so much there. So go follow that. We will share all of the websites on my page, Jenny's page on the Facebook and YouTube, and you can share them around. So please make sure you do, but we're in, we're in a critical hour, but we are also in an hour where we get to see the Holy Spirit move and respond and the Father move and respond on behalf of his people's prayers. And that's ours, your prayers, my prayers, united together. It's not about one celebrity or someone with a name or someone with a platform, you need to know your voice matters. Your voice has authority in the heavenly realm. So it's time to release it. So I'll leave you guys with that. I love you and bless you. 
make sure you watch that live and we will share all of the um, the links and all of the places you can follow. Make sure you're following Jenny on Instagram as well because she updates regularly about everything that we're doing, everything that's happening, all of the strategies and solutions that the Lord is giving us and moving towards the million women on the mall next year. But bigger than that, the bigger picture of that, of the million women on the mall is all about rallying a movement of prayer over our children and the nations and seeing the Lord respond on our behalf. So yes, you can listen to the other live that I've just posted to my Instagram. Thank you, Her Voice Movement. We love you guys. We love all of you. So yes, I'm gonna leave you guys with that unless you have one last question. By the way, I'm gonna actually be sharing more about um, prayer. So if you have any questions about prayer and you're new to prayer, all of that kind of thing, you have questions, ask away. Ask away on this post. Jenny's last name is Jenny Donnelly, D-O-N-N-E-L-L-Y, Jenny Donnelly. You can follow her on Instagram. I'm going to tag everything that you guys need in the previous main live that we did, the one hour long live. I'm going to go into the comments right now in a minute and tag all of the links, all of the websites you can learn all about, and you can follow it all there and find out everything you need to know there and also go to um, the websites to do with the million women on the mall and also the praying and the fasting, that's gonna be released very soon as well. So I know it's a lot, but one little piece at a time and you guys will make sure you follow us because we are gonna be sharing more about the fast, the fast that we're calling the one year fast. So, all right, love you and bless you. Bye.